So on the bench is my newest project, one that I'll hopefully get to work on over Thanksgiving break here. And that's a Radio Shack Model 4P. I, I picked it up locally. Uh, it was listed as non-working. Uh, the power switch lights up when you turn the power on, but nothing else happens. So the assumption at this point is this is a power supply issue. As you can see, I've already removed the case, the back part of the case. Um, I've got the front of the machine here. As you can kind of see CRT in the front of the, the floppy drives. Done a bit of reading. The power supply is up under this panel here. I believe it's these four screws that hold it in place. So really at this point there's two things I want to do. Where did I put the power cord? Is I do want to try to apply power and make sure that it's really dead. Of course, I'm assuming it is. Let's see, that's over here. No floppy access, no high voltage noise. The light is on. Brightness and contrast are all the way up. No raster. That really looks like, a, at a minimum, a switching power supply issue. So uh, let's get a voltmeter here set up. Just a really old crusty one. I don't need anything special here. Hopefully that's visible on camera, not buried under a bunch of uh, glare. I can pull power connector off one of the floppy drives here. We can get to a ground. We can get to what should be plus five. And we'll apply power here and see if we see anything. So what's that? Dancing around. I'm going to assume that's millivolts. Hopefully, yeah, millivolts. So getting as high as a little over a quarter volt. It's like the power supply is trying to start and failing to start constantly. The AC is off. Okay, yeah, it's dying down. And I suspect we'll see a similar thing on the plus 12. So we'll get on the plus 12 here. We'll apply mains power again. And I saw that jump up over a volt for a second. And now it's dancing up as high as maybe approaching 800 millivolts. So again, both the power rails both the positive power rails are a no-go here on the supply. There's a negative 12, but it isn't broke out to the floppy drives, so I can't test it directly here. So we've confirmed what was listed in the ad, and that is that it, it, you know the indicator light comes on, but the system does not power up or do anything. We've confirmed the power supply is not doing any, uh, you know, producing regulated voltage as it should. I know based on my reading of the service manual, I think I started the video with this panel here, has the power supply attached to it. And it looked like, if, in what I read, there's a way to actually flip this cover over such that the power supply is exposed but still connected to the machine. I guess we'll find out when we get down into it. This machine does have a modem in it. I don't know if it's the Tandy modem, which is good for 300 baud and use the Tandy modem command set, or somebody did a somewhat of a haze compatible modem, I guess, that was good for 1200 baud. Looks like there's three more screws here along the back. This poor old screwdriver, the plastic handle on it's disintegrating. Based on the product number, it, it's a non uh, non gate array. So it's an original and you know not the later generation gate array motherboard in it. So it, it, it 
it is oh, it's, can't see it here well it, it's a model 2410 84 64 it's hard to say without the the an a on the end would be the gator a and this isn't the gator a version so it may actually be one of you know I, serial number was pretty low on it too so now supposedly this can do that and be screwed back down to give it a solid mounting so let's attempt to bring the power supply into frame here. Let me put a screw in that just to. Well, it's sitting there okay. So it looks to me like a pretty traditional Model 3 4 power supply. This should be the monitor power. The uh, black and purple here coming off, so it's a separate 12 volt rail for the monitor. Uh, and then there's a 12 volt rail on the main power supply for the floppy drives. They keep them separated. Uh, it helps reduce uh, the video jumping around during floppy access. Uh, they're isolated from each other in some way a little bit. Uh, this, of course, is the primary power in. I'm guessing the large reservoir caps here are probably still holding charge. There's a fan in the case, which is this connection right here. There's the monitor power. And I'm going to go ahead and see if I can get this off to release the power supply. Oops. And then I try to drop it. So we'll do a visual inspection. bit of a vintage electronic smell almost like something there's a hint of a failed device not really power supply related though so let me do a visual there is definitely a reefa cap or two on there either one looks to be blown but those should be replaced uh, they will fail I'm not seeing bulging caps or electrolyte on the board any place. See from a physical standpoint, I don't see anything failed on here. I don't see burned resistors. I don't see, you know, capacitors exploded. Uh, you know, there's a thousand things that could be wrong on here, but visually I don't see anything outright that would cause this. There was a, a testing flow chart in the manual. If the power supply didn't come up. Uh, that kind of led you through bits and pieces. You know, because we were seeing some voltage produced, it says that would say the fuse is good. But I'll test it anyhow. Yep, fuse is fine. I think maybe the next step is I'm going to go ahead and secure this. We'll get power brought back up to it and test it outside of the system. If there's a short someplace in the system, that would be potentially enough to keep the power supply from coming up. It would crowbar and shut itself down. It's a lot tighter going in there than it seemed to be coming out. screw that was meant to go in there. Huh.
is AC power coming in. A little uh, mauve. Looks like it's fine. I remember seeing that in the schematic. Clips. Now, this power supply is old enough, it might actually not like to start uh, without a load. That, that's always a possibility as well. Oh, these leads are all tangled up. Looking at the color coding, I would guess V1 is plus 5, it is red. So we'll clip on here. We are in volts. You bring the power cord back. Reset switch. There's the power switch. No, it, it came up to about three volts. It looked like, and then dropped off to down around six tenths. So the power supply definitely isn't starting. V3. Got up to 1.2 volts. This is the 12 volts for the monitor. So no, the power supply definitely is not starting. I don't have any indication why. Well, let me get the power removed. Safe everything here. Of course, the large bolt caps on the power supply could still hold a huge charge and be potentially deadly. Uh, I'm assuming there's bleeder resistors in the design. Nothing says the bleeder resistors haven't gone open. You need to be careful around switching power supplies. Even if you see bleeder resistors in the schematic, it doesn't necessarily mean they are good bleeders and are discharging the caps, so you need to test. Uh, once I remove the switching power supply from this back panel, it'll become much more dangerous because I'll be able to touch on the back side of the board. But you know, in memory, this power supply to me is identical to the one in my Model 4, and part of me wonders if I just yanked the one out of the Model 4 for temporary testing. Would that be good enough, just as a quick test? I've actually got a switcher coming. This is a 65 watt power supply. And I've got a 66 watt mean well power supply that's plus 5 at, I want to say 5 amps, and plus 12 at 2 or 3, and minus 12 at about half, which is very equivalent to what this power supply here is rated and might make a, a decent, more modern replacement to get to something that might be more reliable in the long term. Uh, with that said, it's always nice to have the original hardware in place as well. That supply should be here today, no tomorrow, should be here tomorrow. And we will probably do a temporary patch to get it hooked up to everything and, and give it a shot as well. Uh, I'm really hoping this is all the more problems we really have. It's just in power supply, although if there's digital problems, so be it. Uh, it's really interesting how the, these power leads are coming down to this amp connector here. Which is whatever's in this bay here. But we'll go from there. I mean, the, the, the goal, honestly, is to get the thing up and running. I have boot media for it. So, but, you know, there's a quick look.
at the system. Uh, I think I got a pretty good deal on it. It was local, so I didn't have to pay any shipping. I was able to just go hand the guy cash and leave with it. It's exactly as you described it. It's actually in, in reasonably good shape uh, with some cleanup on the case. I think it'll look really nice. The yellowing is minimal. I've seen far worse. Uh, but there it is. I guess we'll pick it up in the next video.